This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. My castaway this week is... In June 2012, Aung San Suu Kyi, the inspirational opposition leader in Burma, finally made it to Oslo to collect the Nobel Peace Prize awarded to her more than two decades earlier. In her acceptance speech, she recalled that when she'd been living in Oxford many years ago, she had listened to Desert Island Discs with her young son, Alexander, and he had asked her whether she might ever be invited to appear on the program. He was aware that, in general, only celebrities took part, and wondered for what reason she might be invited. I considered this for a moment, and then answered, perhaps because I'd have won the Nobel Prize for Literature, and we both laughed. The prospect seemed pleasant, but hardly probable. Yet improbable things do happen, and in summer 2012 it was announced that Aung San Suu Kyi had agreed to appear on Desert Island Discs. Aung San Suu Kyi's name-checking Desert Island Discs at such an important moment in her struggle offers further proof that the reach of this radio program knows no bounds. It has featured in a Tom Stoppard play and an episode of Absolutely Fabulous. It has been imitated all round the world, and many among its loyal audience of around three million people need little prompting to offer their own selections of eight records, as became evident when in June 2011 some 28,000 submissions were made to the special program Your Desert Island Discs, which had invited listeners to submit their personal record choices and reasons for making them. The result made for compelling listening. Should you ever get the invitation to the island, this is what will usually happen. Around three months before the proposed transmission date, your name will have been raised as a potential interviewee at one of the regular meetings held to review candidates. Present at this meeting will have been the Desert Island Discs producer, the presenter, whom for current purposes we will call Kirsty, and the researcher. The small program team that lies behind Desert Island Discs nestles in room 6045 in Broadcasting House, among the teams responsible for In Our Time, Start the Week, Midweek, and Loose Ends, so the opinions of passing colleagues are also heard. There is little science underpinning the choice of castaways, and deciding who should be invited is the subject of much, often heated, debate among the production team. So, when you receive your invitation to the island, you will already have passed the test that is at the same time stringent and subjective, with a strong element of randomness. Castaways are not necessarily household names, but each one has played a highly significant role within his or her own field and lived a rich and interesting life. Once it is confirmed that you have the right profile to be marooned, you will be approached. If the invitation plops onto your doormat in the same post as notification of your proposed knighthood or damehood, open the letter marked BBC first, for whatever that other envelope might contain, being marooned on the desert island is the greater honour. And the Desert Island Discs invitation is much more exclusive. Over 2,500 awards are made annually in the official honours lists, whereas just 42 people are cast away each year on the desert island. If you agree to be cast away, and it is not assumed that you will agree, since some are approached but choose not to appear, two months or so in advance of your edition being aired, you will be visited by the researcher, to whom you will give your list of eight records plus book and luxury. You will then undergo an interview about the areas of your life which the program should cover, and in particular the details of your childhood, which might not be extensively covered in the press cuttings, but which will be of considerable interest to the listener. You will not be invited to define no-go areas, but sensitivities, about family matters, for example, will be discussed. In essence, the researcher will be looking for ways to express how the particular shake-up of your genetic cocktail and the circumstances of your early life have produced the person you have become. After this interview, the researcher will draft a summary of what you have said, trying at the same time to capture the subjects that made your eyes light up, the moments when you were lost in thought, and the reflections about pieces of music that captured very vivid and significant memories. The research notes, together with any books or DVDs, are sent to the presenter and producer, so that they can immerse themselves in the details of your life in advance of your program being recorded.
Meanwhile, back in the office, work begins trying to meet your exacting musical demands.